All right, guys, so quickly we're going to go through electron arrangements, um, arrangement of electrons and atoms. Okay, so basically we're going to be talking electron configurations, okay? Now, when we talk electron configurations, what we're doing is we are taking the quantum numbers and basically making that explain how the electrons are organized within our electron cloud, okay? That's all we're doing. So, first and foremost, when we talk about electron configurations, what we're starting with, again, is we're starting with our energy level. Okay, remember, this is our principal quantum number. This is our n, okay? Then we go to the letter denoting the orbital. Okay, this was our l, okay? So what we do is we look at where are we in terms of energy level from the nucleus. Remember, our nucleus is here. We see electrons increasing in number, meaning they move further and further away. We have an L, we have an orbital shape, in other words, the shape in space, shape in space, okay? And then we have what's lastly the superscript denoting the number of electrons. Okay, this is where you have to go back and kind of review a little bit. Remember that an S can hold two electrons max, a P can hold six electrons, a D can hold ten electrons, now again, well, let me finish. F is 14. Now, when I talk about 2, 6, 10, and 14, I am talking about the orbital, what we call the S, P, D, or F. Keeping in mind, the reason S holds 2 is because there's a single S orbital. The reason a P can hold 6 is because there's three separate P's. That's where we get 6. D holds 5 because there's five separate D's. So what that means as a reminder is that each individual d orbital can only hold two electrons. Each individual p orbital can only hold two electrons. But because I have three p's, that's why it's six, that's why it's ten, etc. Okay? Now, where we see that is when we look at the energy levels. Now, um, we're going to watch a video here in just a sec on electron configurations. The point it's going to make is here when I look at one electron. Okay, so this is specifically hydrogen. Hydrogen is the only one electron atom, obviously, isn't it? We don't see, we just see one, two, or three. What happens as you increase the electrons, and if you go to any of the practice links that I have on the flipped page, you will notice that one of them, it's kind of cool. It specifically takes you through and shows you exactly how these energy levels start separating apart as I add electrons. Because there's a couple of things to remember. First off, we know that electrons, like charges, repel. So we know electrons are going to repel each other. And so because repel, I don't know what that is supposed to be. So electrons repel, and so that's why we start seeing some of this division as we add more and more electrons. Okay? Now, what you'll notice here is you start getting a clue as to our organization. So notice 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. Okay, then we see 4s and 3d and 4p. One of the things that we'll talk about as we go through this is first the order of things and why there's an order and second how we fill them as we go through and those are the rules we'll be dealing with in just a sec. Now first before we get that far, diagrams. Notice that I'm using when you look at you can see the boxes okay S we know only holds two electrons so look at one up one down okay so what we do is we fill known levels first so we're gonna fill 1s first then, when 1s is full, the next one has to go to 2s because there's no more room. We use a half arrow to represent the electrons. So notice I have one up and one down. So literally what you're looking at, when you look at 1s, okay, you're literally seeing quantum number n, l, m's of l, okay. When you look at the up and down arrows, though, what we're seeing is we're seeing m's of s. We're seeing our fourth quantum number. We're seeing the spin number, okay. Because remember, we have to have one going up and one going down because two electrons cannot occupy the same space with the same wave functions, okay? So what this does is this is actually where we get the Pauli exclusion principle, okay? Pauli exclusion basically states that no two electrons, so no two electrons can have the same quantum numbers quantum numbers. Okay, so for example, let's look at, well, let's even look at our 1s. If we have 1s, 
Remember, I can have 1s1. The very next one will be 1s2. Okay, well, if they're both 1, that means they both have an n equals to 1. Since we know it's an s, we know both of them have an l equal to 0. m's of l, by the way, also has to be 0, correct? Well, all three of those are the same, but notice m's of s. On one, m's of s is 1 half. On the other, the m's of s is negative 1 half. So poly exclusion is basically the idea that no two electrons can have the same identical sets of quantum numbers. Okay, that's all it is. In other words, we have to see different quantum numbers. Okay, second rule, Hund's rule. Okay, do not get overwhelmed by this. First and foremost, keep it simple. Electrons repel. So in other words, while you're not supposed to personify like something like an electron, it makes it simple here. Electrons hate each other. Okay, and I just know hund is a four letter, hate is four letter, they'll start with H. That's how I keep this straight in my head. So if they hate each other, what this means is when I look at multiple orbitals, something like the P's or something like the D's, what happens is the electrons want to have their own space first. So literally, I'll put this electron in, I'll put this electron in, I'll put this electron in. The fourth electron only pairs up if it has to. In other words, if I had this, okay, one, two, I wouldn't do this and leave that open. Does that make sense? So this would never happen. As long as there's an open space available, the electron will fill it. They don't want to be around each other. They only pair up if they have to. So think of it that way. They're only occupying same orbital if have to. Okay, does that make sense? So that's all that's going on with the Huns rule. Now that brings us to off bow. Now off bow is really basically the basics. This is where we recognize that electrons, okay, let's continue our, th our theme of them being people-like. Electrons are lazy, okay? Now, what this corresponds to is remember that we said the lowest electron, lowest energy level is closest to the nucleus, highest electron is furthest from the nucleus. So, literally, they're going to occupy the lowest energy orbital they can. So, if there's something open in one, they're going to fill one before they move to two. They're going to fill all of two before moving on to three. So, this is where we get that idea of them determining what they occupy. So, they're always going to start lowest, 1s, 2s, then 2p. So I'm not going to see, here's 1s, let me label this, 1s, 2s, 2p, okay? I'm not going to see an electron, an electron, an electron, and then I'm not going to see an electron jump up there. There's room here in the 2s, so it's not going to go there, it's going to come here first. Everybody follow? All right, so let's do the video. In the month. Oops. Technical difficulties. Hold on. Modern theory of the hydrogen atom or any one electron ion. All subshells with the same principal quantum number n have the same energy. Theory tells us, however, that in atoms containing more than one electron, the repulsive interactions of the electrons with one another cause subshells of the same principal quantum number to differ in energy. The one electron in the hydrogen atom, in its lowest energy, or ground state, occupies the 1s orbital. In helium atomic number 2, there are two electrons. Where does the second electron go? The first rule is that electrons occupy the lowest available orbital. The second rule follows from the Pauli exclusion principle. Any orbital can hold, at most, two electrons of opposite spin. These rules tell us that in helium, both electrons occupy the 1s atomic orbital. With increasing atomic number, the electrons occupy orbitals of increasing energy. With carbon, we encounter a new question. Because there are three degenerate 2p orbitals, that is, orbitals of equal energy, Hund's rule tells us that with two or more orbitals of the same energy, we should place electrons singly in each, with parallel spins until all are half full. Okay, so let me pause it here real quick. Degenerate. All they're saying is it's the same orbital. So 2p, I have three degenerate orbitals. That's all they're saying when they say degenerate. It's just that they're equal. So I have three p's, 
three P's, okay, five D's, etc. With nitrogen, we arrive at a half-filled subshell. A half-filled subshell is associated with special stability. That's important, guys. As we come to oxygen, having used up all the vacant 2p orbitals, we must pair electrons. With neon, we come to the end of the first row of the periodic table and the stable octet of electrons in the outermost shell. Okay. So, guys, basically, what you want to pick up on now is the fact that you saw something significant about the stability, the electron locations, and things like that. So that brings us to basically what we see in terms of patterns on the periodic table. So notice that representative P block elements, representative S block. When we talk representative, and this is important in the next chapter, actually, when we go into chapter 5. Okay, these two represent our representative. Notice that 2 plus 6 equals 8. So remember learning about the octet rule back in ninth grade, eighth grade, etc. This is what's going on. Now the point I want to make here is for you guys to notice that we have the periodic table organized by where that last electron was found. So notice S, well 1S, 2S. Then I go 2P, 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 2P. There's six elements here. There's two here. So what we get or we get blocks of elements. So we have what's known as the S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. Now, all that's referring to when we have whatever orbital block, so any letter, any letter block, what we're saying is we're literally referring to the location of the last electron for that element. Okay, so let, let's play here. So if I have something like oxygen, okay, we know oxygen is on the second row, okay? I know oxygen is in the P block, okay? And I actually know oxygen is fourth in. So one, two, three, four. Well, guess what? I know the final electron is there. So that means literally one, two, three. I know that this looks like that at 2P. I know 2S is full. And I know 1s is full, and I know that because of the previous rules. If my last electron is here at 2p and I have 2p4, then I know that my 1s and my 2s have to be full because electrons are lazy, off bows rule. They will fill the lowest electron energies first. They won't pair up until they have to as Hun's rule, and I have to have a down arrow and an up arrow because of the uh, Pauli exclusion principle. Okay? So these are the kind of connections you want to make. By the way, I can also look at this and figure out my... Um, my orbital numbers. So N equals 2, L, it's P, so L equals 1. M's of L, my last one, remember we just randomly said negative 1, 0, positive 1. So my M's of L is negative 1, and my M's of S is negative 1 half because it was down. Okay? Now, anomalies. These are irregularities when we look at electron configurations, and this has to do with what the video talked about in terms of half filled being extremely stable. So we start seeing some exceptions with the S and the D. The first one is um, copper. Actually, this isn't copper. It's a typo. Dang it. This is chromium. Okay, so CR. Chromium should be right here, which technically should be D4 and S2. Okay, but we don't see that. Instead, what we observe is we see this becoming a 1 and this becoming a 5. And it just has to do with that special stability. Same thing with um, copper and with silver. So we're going to talk about those in class, but be aware and ready for that. Because with copper, what you're literally going to see is you're going to see copper instead of being um, 4s2, 3d9. I mean, yeah, one, two, yeah, 4s2, 3d9. You literally see it as 4s1, 3d10. And I don't know. It's just the way it is. All right. So I'm going to go through, fly through the things. Make sure you pause at each of the questions. So pause it, solve it. Okay, there's your answer. Here's the next one, pause it. Here's your answer. Again, pause, answer, pause, answer, pause, answer. All right, guys, see you tomorrow.